I need a removal plan. Of a person? From alive to not alive? Or is it an inconvenient grave that must vanish with occupant, dead or undead? You evidently offer a wide range of services. Welcome back, folks, to another Ed Time story. I am here with Ed Greenwood, the man himself, original creator of the Forgotten Realms and many other settings. Uh, I am wondering, Ed, though, for these Ed Time stories, what do you enjoy about writing things like short narrative fiction that you don't get from writing, uh, like, realms lore, like we usually have on the channel? Well, it gets, gives you a chance to share, share history, lore, the way people in the realms would get it. It's a minstrel or a bard telling you a story in a tavern. And, and, you know, it might be wrong, it might be exaggerated, but that's the way they get their history. So, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to like, subscribe, be sure to turn on notifications so you can be alerted to the next videos coming out. Uh, also, consider becoming a protector of the realms. If you go to patreon.com slash edgreenwood, the support from the Patreon is what directly contributes to us being able to make these videos. So, uh, please, enjoy this short story. A Mert Glimpse. One old lord too many. I don't know what to make of him, to tell truth. He's fat and old and wheezing and he shuffles around everywhere like an alley drunk, but Laryl uses him as her pet sneak thief and somehow he stays alive, damn it, through scrape after skirmish after spell duel. I don't know how he does it. Wrapped in her protective spells, of course. What would kill you and me for sure and certain. He staggers through not noticing or feeling. Get rid of her magic and he'll be one more sack of old bones bleeding out his feeble last on the stones at your feet. He's cunning, though. So she, easy enough to say, get rid of her magic. But how? Link, lass, you're the dark hero of Skullport, not me. I pay to have nasty little tasks done and others do them. I concern myself not with the how. Except to make very sure I know nothing at all about it and have clearly been far away and busy at something else when the sordid deeds were accomplished. Hmm. Huh. I can't trust anyone to distract the Lady Laryl but me, and I can't do that and at the same time be somewhere else cutting the old wolf a fatal new chest window. We need a plan. Loath as I am to involve anyone else, as everyone in the end is a wagging mouth that can yap and so must be silenced, we need some sort of local expert. Someone who knows who and how to be a reliably effective diversion. No eye tyrants, nor their lick spittles. There'll be endless mouths to silent. I, I, I'm not sure I have enough years left to me to get... to be done with all that load of work. Well, why not another masked lord? Our problem is too many old lords. If we have to silence Mert and another masked lord, all the better. A and you know any? Of course. They all think none of us know who they really are but they can't resist keeping their masks and such at home. And most water Davians have eyes that work. So, uh, can I leave that to you? If you provide the large heap of gems I'll need for a bribe, masked lords don't sell themselves cheap these days. Who does? So? So I'll be needing a second heap of gems. Why? I bought my m my lord, but it turns out the cunning plans I so admired aren't his. He buys them from someone else. Who? All I have is a name and a place to contact him. Rourke the Mouth. And a dock ward whips and bells shop called Tashera's Tassels. I hate this sort of sidle and murmur stuff. Right, I'll, I'll get your gems, but the, the visit to the shop and the negotiations with Rourke the Mouth, indeed, are all yours. I never heard of shop or man, and I know nothing of this. Of course, I am utterly unsurprised. I have a bad feeling about this. My lack of surprise continues unabated. I join you in finding surprise elusive. The watching gods grant we find failure even more elusive. Uh, this is Waterdeep, remember? I... I so rarely get any chance at all to forget that, Narnthar. L let us hope you provide one. Was that a threat? Lengthless. I never threaten. I merely promise. Tashera's tassels proved to be as dark, as dusty, and as cramped as 
Narnthar had expected, and, also as expected, up a flight of narrow stairs above a fishmonger's shop that smelled as if entire generation of eels had rotted in vats of well-aged gnome vomit, yet somehow reproduced in their decaying state so that each new elver stank more pungently than its parents. It was the sort of stink that took you by the back of the throat and started choking you from within. Your eyes leaked water, your nose ran like a tap, and if there was anything in your stomach, you shared it with the world forthwith. Narnthar spewed what was left of his morning meal, bad cheese and worse pickled silverfin, so no great loss, onto the alley cobbles, washed his mouth and chin with a little from his belt flask of fire wine, and set off up the stairs. Damp, sloping treads gave ominously under his weight, but he made it to the top without any collapses underfoot, and shouldered open the door, bearing a placard crudely lettered to Shara's tassels. Bells hung on fine chain, tinkled to mark the opening of the door, so Narnthar wasn't surprised to see a hooded, burly shape seated behind a desk in the crowded gloom ahead, staring at him. The lone lamp in the place spotlit anyone stepping inside the door, but Narnthar resisted the urge to strike a pose and merely announced flatly, I seek Vrork the Mouth on a business matter. Are you... You found who you seek? A low, rough male voice rumbled from the seated man. There's a stool up here if you'd sit. What business? I need a removal planned. Of a person? From alive to not alive? Or merely a geographical relocation? Never to be heard from again? Or... Or is it an inconvenient grave that must vanish with occupant? Dead or undead? You evidently offer a wide range of services. At this outset, I merely outline possibilities and leave specifics to you, so... A living person to be slain, irrevocably if possible, so leaving nothing priests can work with, but in such a manner that the whole city can swiftly know of this demise. The hooded man nodded. Not to be indelicate, but uh, who is this person? Narnthar peered this way and that, but in the close and dimly lit quarters there was no way of knowing if one or a dozen eavesdroppers were on the other side of this wall of whips and bell strings or that one, so he contented himself with leaning forward and murmuring low-voiced, Mert, sometimes called the moneylender. Oh, a worthy target indeed. And who wants him dead? Narnthar winced. And there you step over a threshold I'm not prepared to hold welcoming for you. Your, uh, curiosity surprises me. Forgive me, my, my glee made me overbold. You regard Mert as a foe, then? Oh, all too often. Do you wish to discuss a plan for Mert's death with me? Contributing details, or would you prefer uh, the manner of his removal to be a surprise? I... I believe I would prefer to know, so I can mark progress and no satisfaction when it does, in fact, occur. Surety, you understand. I understand indeed. And in the interest of that surety, I believe it is my moment to be possibly overbold. I deal with no masked men. Arthur Boltree, is it possible that you have lived almost threescore years upon Toril and remained unaware that we all wear masks in life, most of us having several? I am very much aware that I find arch sarcasm as tiresome as the next pompous sage. Yet I am more astonished that you know my name and age than I am irked at your verbal parry. Unmask yourself or consider this idle discussion of mere possibilities at an end. The hooded man chuckled, lifted one large hand, and with his thumb hooked his facial covering up and off. Narnthar stared. Mert? Do tell me who hired you, Narnthar, just in the interest of your staying alive to see morning, you understand. The smile Mert nodded as Narnthar swallowed his rising fear was soft and would have ridden the jaws of a wolf very, very well. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're doing this. Oh boy, and this one has several correct pronunciations. 
this is the snake that um, has two heads and, you know, is supposed to swallow itself in, in mythology and so on, forming a ring. And there are a number of ways to pronounce this. Amphisbaina. 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 There are all sorts of ways. All of them are correct. You will hear all of them in the realms. Amphisbaina. 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 You can do any one you want, and guess what? This is one of those, you can mangle this however you want, and when you're speaking to people, they will get it. Because they have mangled it too.